This video was brought to you by Sky Firearms. For more information, check them out at sky.com. That's S-C-C-Y dot com. Hey there folks, Paul Markle from Student of the Gun here. And today we're going to talk about a, another Sky pistol. And you're like, oh, a Sky pistol, what's that all about there, buddy? Uh, I've heard rumors. All right. As I mentioned in a previous video, I believe it was either the late summer or early fall of 2019, uh, we at Student of the Gun, the whole crew, we went out to a range and we met with the my friend Scott, the national sales director at the time for Sky Firearms. And Scotty brought out uh, a couple of Connex, not Connex boxes, <laughs> Pelican cases. <laughs> A couple of Pelican cases with Sky pistols in 9mm and 380. At the time, they had four models. They had the CPX 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we spent the better part of a day shooting the 9mm and the 380 pistols. We probably got our hands on somewhere between uh, 12 and 15 different pistols. All the, and you say, well, there's only four models, but they have different colors. You know, they had the camouflage one and the purple one and the red one and the blue one and the black one and all that. So, uh, we had a good day. Didn't have any issues or problems. Uh, the guns have a, the original guns, the CPX. This is a, a CPX-3 with a little mini red dot on it from Crimson Trace. We've talked about this one before. So, the guns have a double action only trigger and all you young gen z and some of you millennial folks are like oh man i tried one of those skies and the trigger was so long it was just such a terrible trigger press calm down it is a double action only trigger for those of you that are unfamiliar for those of you that have only shot glocks or sigs or what have you back in the 90s Right, the, the Glock pistol came on the scene in the United States in the early 90s. I know it was developed before that, but it wasn't until the early 90s that the Glock pistol came to the United States and it was common. Well, a lot of police agencies who were using revolvers at the time were afraid of the single action or the striker fired safe action trigger press. All right. Uh, the, the trigger press on the new Glocks, you know, I like the fact that it's only one trigger press, not two, like the traditional DASA guns, but, but it's just too light. The, the trigger press is just too light. So what did American manufacturers do? Smith & Wesson and SIG in particular, uh, they started making double action only service pistols to sell to these chiefs and sheriffs who were afraid of the Glock pistol. They were afraid of the Glock trigger. And what you had, and Beretta did too, Beretta did it, just about every manufacturer, handgun manufacturer in the United States in the late 90s going into the 2000s produced some kind of double action only. That means the trigger is double action and that's it. It doesn't go double to single. A lot of you young people don't understand the struggle that we all went through. So the original CPX has a very consistent but long double action only trigger. Now when I was talking to my friend Scott uh, from Sky, he was telling me back then, he said we're developing a new model and it will be available soon. Well soon has happened and we recently got our hands on the DVG-1. The DVG-1 and this is a 9mm pistol from Sky and it has a striker fired trigger not a double action only trigger. See, if you look at the back of this pistol right here, you will see where the hammer is. The hammer, as you press the trigger, travels backwards and then falls forwards, and then it does it again and again. Right here, it looks different in the rear because this straight looking trigger right here is a striker fire trigger. So it is not super light, but it is much lighter than the original. Now, if you like the original and you're good with that, great. And if you don't, well, guess what? We've got this one here. So uh, Zachary and Jared and I recently went to, we were all together in Salt Lake City, 
and we went to the TNT indoor gun range because it was, well, it was cold and snowy and crappy outside, and we went inside, and we spent uh, the better part of an afternoon shooting a bunch of guns, and we shot this one. And I'm going to tell you guys that even though these the frames are very similar, they're similar in size, if you look, the this slide is about a half inch longer than this 380 slide. And I shot the 9mm, the CPX-1, uh, years before, and it felt just a little bit snappy. Because if you've shot 9mm compact guns, uh, lightweight, compact 9mm guns, especially ones with polymer frames, you know that they tend to be a little bit snappy. So we shot this gun. I put the uh, first magazine of 10 rounds through it, and it comes with two magazines, and they have the the little hook floor plate to put your pinky on, or if you want to be more concealed, you can put the flat floor, floor plate on them, 10 and 10. So, shot it at a, star, at a target about three to four yards away, and uh, was very pleased to find that my initial shot group was extremely tight. It just rounds were right on top of each other, right where they should have been. Okay, fantastic. Uh, passed the gun around to Jared and Zachary. Uh, we put, I don't know, about 100 rounds or so through it of a variety of ammunition. And what I like to do when I test a new gun is I go to the ammo can and I grab out fistfuls of different types of ammunition. Brass case, steel case, nickel case, full metal jacket, uh, different types of projectiles, you know, jacketed hollow point and so on and so forth to test the appetite of the gun. We had one stoppage with this gun. And it was very early on, we had one stoppage, and I took a look at it, and it was a failure of the case to completely uh, extract and eject, so it was kind of a double feed situation. That situation uh, occurred when I had put the aluminum case CCI, or if you guys remember when they were selling it in the purple boxes at Walmart, marked federal, uh, aluminum case. Why, why does aluminum case ammo exist? And it's kind of hard to find now uh, because it's really super inexpensive, right? It's training ammo. It's not duty ammo. I wouldn't recommend that you carry aluminum cased ammo in your gun for protection. But they make it aluminum case because it's cheaper. And I had some of that, not very much, but I had some of it in the can and I put it in there. And uh, so, and if you guys know, aluminum cases are much lighter than brass cases, so sometimes you get different functioning in your gun. Uh, so I took note of it, I was like, okay, cleared the stoppage, drove on. For the rest of the uh, of our shooting session, we used Winchester, Black Hills, Spear, and Federal, uh, both in nickel cased and brass cased, full metal jacket, uh, Hydra Shock, the, the Black Hills Honey Badger, and we never again had another stoppage. So I'm gonna chalk that up to the aluminum case, uh, aluminum case to ammunition, and the gun was fresh out of the box. So that's pretty good. You know, like, oh, it had a stoppage. I'd never own a gun if it had a stoppage, whatever. Uh, what does this gun have? It has a single action uh, striker fired trigger, has a, a lightweight polymer frame, which is very common today, stainless steel slide, cocking serrations, uh, fancy cocking serrations on the rear, and on the front, I don't really need those on the front, but whatever, if you like them, great. Doesn't cost you anything extra. Uh, it has three dot sights, which is, you guys know how I feel about three dot sights, right? They're training wheels, they're ridiculous, but that's okay, you can fix them by taking a black marker and, and filling them in. How far are you gonna shoot with this gun? It's a compact, lightweight, small nine millimeter. It's not a competition gun. I'm not going to be shooting bullseye at, at 25 yards with it. Probably going to be called upon to shoot bad creatures within two to three to five to maybe seven yards at the most. And I can tell you, uh, three, five, seven yards, this thing was point of aim, point of impact. Uh, and the big surprise, kind of the big surprise for everybody who shot it, and I shot it left-handed only, or left-hand only, right-hand only, two-handed, and even shooting it left hand only, I didn't have any stoppages, no problem. Everybody who shot the gun said that it really, despite, you know, even when we were shooting duty ammo, you know, the 115 grain plus P jacketed hollow point, not that bad. 
Now, recoil was really not that bad. It wasn't severe by any stretch of the imagination, and it wasn't even that snappy. Now, obviously, it's a lightweight gun, and it's going to have some recoil to it, but it's not punishing. So, uh, the DVG-1, uh, so far, so good. It has performed very well. It performed very well, not just for myself, but uh, for my sons. Three of us tested it. We all thought it, it, well, we found that it worked very well. So, if you're looking for a new concealable, ultra concealable handgun that's not that expensive. They're not cheap, but they're also not very expensive. Comes with two magazines. You might want to check this one out. This is the DVG-1 by Skyfire.